Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and you all deserve a special medal of bravery today for traveling through the storm conditions to get to church today. It's, it's quite a storm we're having. Uh, a funny thing happened at the Sparta Church this morning. I was right in the middle of my sermon when everybody's cell phone went off with an, a, a, a weather alert. It was like, bam, 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 all throughout the congregation. It was pretty wild. And I took that as God's sign that I should cut the sermon a little bit shorter. God is telling me to take it easy, get people home as quickly as possible. But thank you for venturing out. I'm Pastor Jack. Welcome to Holy Trinity. Some people are not able to travel out today, so I offer a cordial welcome to them as they are watching online. And by the way, we still have a contingency from a contingent from China, and they're tuning in uh, now and then. So again, greetings across the seas to our friends in China as well. It's time to start with our children's message. So I'd like the children to, who are with us to come up front. We got we got a lot to talk about today. How are you? How's it going? Good morning. Did you have a good swim? Did you have a good swim to church today or rowboat, whichever way you got? Canoe, ark. Should we start building the ark? Yeah, I think so too. You know, hey, I want to show you something. A couple weeks ago, I was at the Jersey Shore and look what I found. Is that beautiful or what? Take a look at that. What do we have here? It's a shell. Yeah, I found this beautiful shell at the Jersey Shore, and it's pretty much intact. A lot of the shells, when, they're, when you find them on the beach, they're like cracked, right? It was like half of them or whatever. But this is a beautiful, beautiful seashell. Did you ever say she sells seashells by the seashore? Can you say that quickly? Seashells by the seashore. Yeah, and... <laughs> And Mare's Eat Oats and Dozy Oats and Little Lambs Eat Ivy. Yeah, that's another one. But I found this shell, and I got to thinking that at one time there was life inside of that very shell that we're looking at here. And then I looked out at the ocean, and I thought, there's a lot of life in that ocean. Think about all the fish that are in the ocean today. Think about all the, the, the sea life that is swimming around. You can't even see all the life that's underwater in the ocean. Then I got to think, wait a minute, there's a lot of life in the ocean, there's a lot of life in the land, and there's a lot of life in the sky when you see birds, right? So I want to ask you a question about that. Can you think of the smallest little creature that God has made on this planet? Think of the smallest little creature. What would you say? Sebastian, you want to take a shot at it? What do you think is the smallest little thing that God has created? Ants, that's a good answer. Ants are good. Uh, a fly, yeah, there's another one. Ants again. How about fleas? Fleas are really small, right? Fleas, gnats are very small. Those are all God's creatures. Now, let's look the other way. Can you think of the biggest, largest thing, creatures that God has made right now? Don't say dinosaurs because they're not around now. But, but other than the dinosaurs, what, what's the largest creature you can think of? A dog? Okay, that's good, yeah. A whale, that's good. And a shark, yeah. Sharks can get pretty big. Those great white sharks, they can be enormous. It's funny, I was, go ahead. What's that? Yeah, yeah I'm talking about creatures now. Uh, I was also thinking of a whale. Now, did you know that we could fit a whale inside of this church, but it would be really, really big inside of this church. Can you imagine a big whale sitting right out there, right here in the church? So the point I'm making is, when we look at God's creatures, we could think of the tiniest little thing, a little gnat, a little flea. We can look at a whale. We can look at creatures that live in the water, creatures that live in the land, but they're all God's creatures, great and small. Isn't that amazing? God is so creative. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of different living things. Some things you can't even see. They're so small, you can't even see with your, without a special lens to, to view them in. Isn't that amazing? So we can thank God for all this great planet, for all the life we have on land and sea and air. Can we thank God for that, for the variety of all the creatures? Let's pray together. Let's all pray together. Lord, we thank you for your creativity 
for your love, for life, for the creatures that inhabit our planet, for the joy of being here on this planet, and all of the great things you have included, all living things. We thank you, Lord, because they all come from you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. So today, I want you to think about that. I want you to think about living things. You might even see some earthworms on the sidewalk today. When it rains, the, the worms like to go out and take a swim, don't they? they? They swim on the sidewalk. You might even see them, okay? Thanks for coming to church today, and I hope you have a good swim home when this is over, all right? Okay, you can go back to where you're sitting. Thanks a lot. We'll continue with our prelude. We thank Jennifer Foos for being back with us today. Let's welcome Jennifer. Jennifer, thanks for coming. distance I just cannot comprehend what all this fighting is for from a distance there is harmony and it echoes through the land it's the voice of hope it's the voice of peace. This is the heart of every man. It's the hope of hopes. It's the love of loves. This is the song of every man. And God is watching us. God is watching. Is watching us from a distance. God is watching. 
watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. Thank you, Jennifer. That was great. I haven't heard that song in a long time, so thank you for sharing that. If you're able to stand, could you please rise as we continue now with our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned, we have failed to be honest, we have lacked the courage to speak, we have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst, God offers both boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please remain standing for our opening hymn for today. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy, live according to it, and grow in faith and hope and love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. 
You may be seated now as we share our assigned scripture verses for today. Good morning. Today's reading is from Isaiah. God's word to Israel's exiles is as sure and effective as never failing precipitation. Their return to the Holy Land and a new exodus is cheered on by singing mountains and by trees that clap their hands. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sour and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that, I, that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle, and it shall be to the Lord for memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. That concludes the reading. Please stand if you're able for the sharing of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. In Matthew's gospel, both Jesus and his disciples sow the seed of God's word by proclaiming the good news that the kingdom of heaven is near. Now, in a memorable parable, Jesus explains why this good news produces different results in those who hear. St. Matthew writes, That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another 30. The Gospel of the Lord. Please have a seat, everyone. Well, I greet you today, as always, in the name of the risen and victorious Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, Jesus the Christ. Again, I welcome you to church. In spite of the storms that we're having outside, you were able to get here safely and I pray that you will also be able to return safely to wherever you may be going. Uh, before I start my message today, I want to share a word of joy and thanksgiving today. I'm looking out, and I see Nancy Amjur is with us. She was in the hospital for a while. She was recuperating at home. Nancy, welcome back. It's great to see you. Great to see you. God bless you. Always good to see you. Well, I want you to take a close look at the monitor screen this morning, and you'll see three pictures on the monitor, and I have a question for you. 
If you were planting seeds, do you want to throw your seeds on the sidewalk? Do you want to throw your seeds on a country road somewhere? Or do you want to throw your seeds on rich, fertile soil? Well, that's kind of a no-brainer, right? Everybody knows the answer to that. And yet, this is exactly what Jesus is talking about in the gospel lesson that I just read. If you, had, if you have seeds to sow, you're not going to throw them on the sidewalk. They're not going to do any good there. You're looking for rich, fertile soil. You're looking for ground that will receive the seeds, nurture the seeds, cause the seeds to sprout and flourish. It's common sense, right? Now, Jesus takes the illustration another step. He says that people need to be like good soil. God's Word is the seed of faith. God is planting the seed of His Word in your soul, and your soul needs to be like good soil, nurturing the seed. It's a very simple, yet, yet very direct illustration from Jesus. You got it now? Your soul should be the fertile soil to receive the Word of God, and the Word of God then will grow and flourish within you. But what happens what happens when you are hardened to the Word of God? What happens when you shut yourself off from the Word of God? What happens when you don't want anything to do with religious instruction or, or the gospel message in the Scriptures? What happens then? Well, look at what Jesus said. Jesus says, As for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the Word and understands it, understands it, and who indeed bears fruit. If you're closed off to the Word of God, you're not going to bear the fruit of the Gospel. The Holy Spirit will not flourish in you. You will be blocked. You will be unreceptive. You will be hardened to the very Word of God that is trying to get into your soul and flourish there. Now, that's all common sense, but think about this. Think about all the people in our world today who are indeed hardened to the Word of God. Think of people who want nothing to do with God's Word. Think of people who are closed off from God's Word. People who would never open a Bible if their life depended on it. People who would never listen to a sermon. People who don't go to church. People who don't pray. People who don't worship. What happens? They're cutting themselves off from their source of strength through the Almighty Spirit of God. That's what they're doing. They're cutting themselves off. They're saying, I don't need it. It's like a brick wall between that person and God. I'm just going to put the wall up. I'm not going to be receptive. Not one bit. You know what? A couple weeks ago, I went to a comedy club, and it was delightful. And I'll tell you what. It was good, old-fashioned humor. There was no cussing there was no swearing there was no vulgar humor it was good old-fashioned good time laughter i'm at this comedy club and i noticed that there are round tables stationed throughout the, the the room there now as you know when there are round tables there are chairs that are not facing the speaker because the tables are round well common sense tells you when the speaker stands up to speak you, if your back is toward the speaker, you turn your chair around and you attend to the speaker. Once you know there was this one guy in the audience, for some unknown reason, did not turn his chair around. So now his back is facing the comedian. He wasn't on his cell phone. He wasn't reading the newspaper. He wasn't doing the New York Times crossword puzzle. No, he chose to put his back to the comedian. So guess who's getting abused during the comedian's presentation? The guy with his back facing the speaker. And the comedian said, hey, what's wrong with you? He goes, when you go to a movie, do you turn your chair around and not look at the screen? But for some unknown reason, this guy was not turning to the speaker. His back was facing the speaker. You know, there are people in our world today who have turned their backs on God. 
God wants to speak to our souls. God wants to plant the seed of His Word in our, in our souls, in our minds, in our spirits. But there are people who refuse. Their backs are turned to God. They don't want to turn around. They refuse. Or what about body language? Think about body language. Did you know that psychologists and sociologists say that if somebody is speaking to you, you should lean forward, you should listen to what they're saying? Now, what does it say if somebody's talking to you uh, and you're looking out the window and it looks like you don't even, you don't even care, you're, you're not paying any attention? Well, psychologists and sociologists say that's rude body language. If somebody's talking to you, you look them right in the eye, you lean forward. Here's another one. Psychologists tell us that if somebody is talking to you, you should not be sitting with your arms folded like that. Did you know that? That's considered a closed posture. That is a body language that says, I am not open and receptive. Yeah, but Pastor Jack, what if I'm cold? You know, what if, what if I have to... No, they say, open your arms, be receptive to the person who is speaking to you, and show that you're receiving their words. Same is true with God. God wants to speak to each and every one of us. What if we're closed off? What if we don't get in the prayer chair to listen to the Spirit of God? What if our backs are turned? What if we're too busy looking here and there and running here and there and we don't even pay attention to what God is trying to say through the Holy Spirit? This is what Jesus is talking about today. Jesus is saying we need to be fertile soil receiving the seed of God's Word, being open to the way that God is penetrating our soul and growing and flourishing the Holy Spirit within us. The Bible says that the that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And your body should be open spiritually to the seed of God's Word. It's all common sense, but we don't always practice it. There was a hymn written in 1985. And the, t the title of the hymn is, Lord, let my heart be good soil. I love that. Right out of this gospel lesson. Lord, let my heart be good soil. Now listen to the words of this hymn. Uh, just a few words. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seed of Your Word. Lord, let my heart be good soil where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, Break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart be good soil. What's the best way you can be good soil for the Word of God? Well, first, Get in your prayer chair. You've heard me say this hundreds of times. Get in your prayer chair. Make the time. And when you're in your prayer chair, be sure to listen to what God is trying to say. Open the soil of your soul to the seed of God's Word inside of you. Be open and receptive. And then here's the next thing. Get yourself a good Bible and open it and start reading it. So many people say to me, Pastor Jack, I would read the Bible, but I don't understand it. It's too complicated. I don't know what's going on. It's all Greek to me. I don't know. Well, let me tell you, in this day and age, there are Bibles that actually make sense in your life. There are study Bibles where on the top of the page is the Scripture verse and on the bottom, there's a thorough explanation of what's going on there. I'd like to do a little show and tell this morning. Many of you have seen my favorite Bible. I carry this with me all the time. I've had this Bible for years and years. If you look at it, it's falling apart. 
Uh, there are coffee stains on the top of the page because one day I, I had spilled a cup of coffee while I was reading the Bible. There are marginal notations in here. There are sermon notes in here. I've underlined things. And you know what? This Bible has changed my life. It has changed my life because it's an application Bible. What does that mean? It means that when you read the Bible verse underneath, there are questions for how to apply that Bible verse to your everyday living. I have applied the Word of God in my life day in and day out, and it has made all the difference in my life. So when you get a good Bible like this, and you start understanding the Word of God and not being afraid of it, you know what happens? The soil of your spirit is soaking up God's holy word. And you apply it. You start looking at life in a different way. You start being more positive. You start being more encouraging. You start being more patient. You start looking at the glass. Glass is half filled, not half empty. It makes a difference. Why? Because now you are tilling the soil of your soul for the word of God to come in. Trust me, it makes all the difference in the world. And I can stand before you and say that this Bible has enriched my life like I never thought it would or could. You can do it too. So get in your prayer chair. Read your scriptures. Get a good Bible. But here's something else you can do. Let's say you don't have time to read. When you're riding in the car, listen to a good Christian radio station. I hear sermons every day. I'm, I'm, I'm on the road. I'm in my car and I'm listening to to sermons. I'm listening to the great preachers in the United States. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm listening to Bible studies. What do I do? I am marinating in the Word of God. Now, that doesn't make me better than everybody else. I'm not bragging. I'm not saying, look at me. I'm a great guy. What I am saying is that when I have marinated in the Word of God, my life is better. My life is more positive I feel better about myself, I feel better about the world, and I fall in love with Jesus Christ every day, every single day. It's about being open to the Word of God. Go, try it. Marinate in the Scriptures, and you will feel the difference in your life. Be good soil for God. And then I'm going to say one last thing. Whatever you do, if you want to be good soil for God's Word, you need to have an attitude of gratitude. Did you hear that? An attitude of gratitude. That means try to find something to be thankful for every day of your life. And you might say, well, Pastor Jack, I'm going through a crisis. The bottom has fallen out. I don't know the, the up from down. I don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I guarantee you right now, in your darkest moments, in the worst times of your life, you can still find something to be thankful for. I guarantee you. And that attitude of gratitude will create good soil in your soul to be receptive to God saying, I'm going to get you through this. Don, what do we say? If God gets you to it, God will get you through it. And God will remind you that He is with you always. Jesus said, I will be with you to the end of the age, and that is a promise. So open your soul, your soil of your heart. Open yourself to the Word of God. Share the Word of God. And you know what? There will be an extra bounce in your step. There will be happiness in your soul. You will praise the Lord like you never did before. By all means... Follow the advice of the Scriptures. Lord, let my heart be good soil, open to the seeds of God's Word. I'm telling you, there's no better place than that. Try it. Thanks be to God. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
you are able, please stand. As we now share the beautiful words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated now for the offering for today. Let us pray. God of field and forest, sea and sky, you are the giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. If you are able, could you please stand now? The Lord be with you. Also here. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now we join to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Holy Communion is offered for everyone here at Holy Trinity. When you receive a wafer, you will be directed to these pre-filled glasses. Please remember that the innermost 
light colored fluid is apple juice or grape juice and the outer two layers are wine. If you prefer a gluten-free wafer, the wafers are located in a small candy dish on, in front of the organ. Please follow the instructions of your ushers, and you may be seated at this time. If you are able, please stand. Let us pray. We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Please have a seat, everyone, for a few brief announcements. Once again, I introduce to you our council president, Joan Cosgrove. And Joan, did you have a nice swim over here today? Did I you, did. or did you take the rowboat? How did you yeah, get here? Did yeah. you? Do? I hydroplaned all the way from uh, yeah. Arlington. <laughs> hydroplaned? Hydro yeah, yeah, that was me coming down Route 15 <laughs> uh, from Sparta today. I, I thought I was, I was flying. Yeah. yeah. God bless you. All right, Joan, go for it. First of all, I'd like to thank Jennifer again. And it, she's, she's blessed with not only the ability to play, play piano, but also to sing beautifully. God bless her with a wonderful, wonderful voice. I don't have a cheat sheet, so I have to turn around on you. Pastor Jack is going away on vacation. I hope he has better weather than we've been having lately. But uh, whatever, I'm sure he'll, he'll enjoy having some time with his family. Uh, offering volunteers are needed. Please see Joyce. Uh, Rise Up is still collecting toiletries. We need them desperately. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to say? Oh, here comes Joyce. Good morning. Last week I talked about volunteers, 
This week, I'm going to read you the definition of a volunteer. I looked it up and some things I learned from it also. The volunteer provides a healthy boost to your self-confidence. A volunteer helps your self-esteem and life satisfaction. A volunteer provides a natural sense of accomplishment. A volunteer is your role as a volunteer. And a volunteer can also give a sense of pride and identity. So with your heart, consider all these volunteer activities that we offer at the church. Thank you. Just think when you volunteer, you feel better. Go in peace, share the harvest.